Liberty Jr. presents Colonel Mudcat and the Fickles by Craig Wetzel. Adapted from the Grimm Brothers fairy tale, The Fisherman and His Wife. Narrated by Rico Brown. Once upon a time, a fisherman named Sid Fickle lived with his wife, Lavinia, in a rundown shack on a river in Mississippi. And every day, Sid went fishing and didn't want no more. One morning, as he sat in his boat, he caught a large catfish near a tree stump. Please, Mr. Fisherman, let me live, the fish said. I ain't even a catfish, not really. You ain't, Sid asked. You sure look like a catfish to me. Colonel Judson Muttcat at your service, said the fish with a bow and a tip of his hat. I'm a fish of honor, and you have my word that I am an enchanted prince. Why kill me? I won't taste good. Throw me back and let me go. Ha 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 ha, Sid laughed. I ain't eating no talking fish, enchanted or not. That'd be bad luck for sure. Go on back where you came from, Colonel Mudcat. Swim away now and a good day to you. And with that, Sid let the catfish go and it disappeared into the water. Then he rode home to his wife in the shack. Catch anything today, honey? Sid's wife asked him when he returned home. Nothing but a catfish, Sid answered. Where is it? I'll fry it for dinner. Well, Sid explained, the fish said it was an enchanted prince, so I let it go. You didn't ask for a wish. An enchanted fish is bound to grant a wish. No, Sid answered. Anyway, what would we need? You old fool, Lavinia hollered. Us living in this rotten shack and you couldn't think of anything we needed? Huh. How about a house large enough to turn around in? That ain't much for a wish. And you did let the fish escape when you could have eaten it. Get on back and tell that fish to give us a larger place, one with room enough for a garden. Sid didn't care to go, but he went. When Sid reached the stump where he caught the catfish, he knocked. Colonel Mudcat, he asked. Soon the fish's head rose out of the water. Good afternoon, sir, he said. Begging your pardon, Colonel, Sid began. But I did catch you and didn't eat you, and my wife says I ought to have wished for something in return. She doesn't care for a living in a shack. She'd like a bigger place with room for a garden. Go home, Colonel Mudcat said. She has what she wants. When Sid returned home, his wife was no longer in the shack. A small cottage stood above the river bank, and Lavinia waited near the door, a smile on her face. Now, ain't this a great deal better, she asked. Inside was a kitchen with running water and a refrigerator, and new furniture filled the living room, and a new bed with a feather mattress was in the bedroom. Behind the cottage, Sid saw a small yard filled with chickens and a garden with vegetables ready for picking, and a fine-looking scarecrow wearing a fancy hat. Well, said Lavinia, ain't it wonderful? Sure is, Sid agreed. I don't expect we'll ever need anything again. They'd lived happily for two weeks when Lavinia said one evening, You know, Sid, this place ain't near as big as I thought it was, and the garden's hardly large enough to bother with. What I'd like is a nice restaurant somewhere on the water where folks from all over can come to eat. Now, why would you want that, Lavinia? Sid asked. Ain't we living rich now? You're too easily satisfied, Lavinia chided. Get on and tell Colonel Mudcat I want a restaurant. Then we won't bother him no more. No, Lavinia, Sid said. Didn't the catfish give us this nice home? Ain't that enough to expect from a fish? Go, said the woman. He'll be glad to do it. Just go and ask him. Sid shook his head. It ain't right, Lavinia, he said, and I ain't going. Then he went. Colonel Judson Mudcat, Sid called several times before the fish appeared. Well, Sid, what does she want this time? asked the colonel. She wants a restaurant, Sid answered. I don't know why, but that's what she wants. Go home to your restaurant, Sid, the colonel said, and disappeared into the water. Ain't it beautiful? Sid's wife asked when he returned home. Would you look at the line of cars a-coming? 
all to eat here. That's fine, Lavania, Sid said. Now let's be satisfied and not ask for nothing more. But one evening, about two weeks later, Sid noticed that his wife seemed troubled. Sid, she said, the restaurant business ain't what I thought it would be, cooking and washing dishes all hours of the day. A body can hardly find time to sleep. And that's a fact. The way I figure, Colonel Mudcat could have given us something better than a restaurant. Go ask him to give us a plantation house and to make me the governor. No, 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 Lavania, Sid said. You're getting way beyond yourself. Get going, she answered, and Sid went. When Sid reached the fish's home, he called his name. What is it now, Sid? Colonel Mudcat asked. Sid noticed irritation in his voice. Colonel Mudcat, he said, she wants to live in a grand plantation house, but that ain't all. Lavania wants to be the governor, too. Go to it, then, laughed the Colonel Mudcat. You'll find your wife, the governor, in your plantation house. So you're the governor, Sid said as he looked around the room, wondering how he'd ever get comfortable on such fancy furniture. Yes, his wife answered. Now I'm the governor. Let's not wish for anything more, Sid pleaded. Everything had gone well for two weeks, when one morning Lavania said, Oh, Sid, time's so heavy being governor. It ain't nothing like I thought it would be. When all's considered, I'd like to be president. Now there's a situation. No, Lavania, Sid screamed. There ain't but one president, and you ain't it. The colonel can't do it, and I'm not asking him to. Go, she ordered, and Sid went. Your wife's not easily satisfied, observed the colonel. No, sir, and that's a fact, Sid agreed. This time, she wants to be the president. Go to Washington, said Colonel Mudcat. You'll find your wife in the White House. Sid took a train to Washington and walked to the White House. Lavania, he said. Be satisfied. You're the president. We'll see about that, she answered. Sid slept well, for he'd walked all the way from Union Station to the White House. But Lavania couldn't sleep and tossed and turned all night, for she couldn't think of anything greater than being president. She was still awake when the sun began to rise over the city. She sat up in bed and looked at it and had an idea. Get up, Sid, she said, shaking her husband. Go see the colonel, for I wish to command the sun and moon. Sid had been dreaming of their old home and the happy days he'd spent fishing in the river. But he woke up sure enough when he heard that. What did you say? He asked in horror. Sid, his wife said, if I can't order the sun and moon to rise, I don't know what I'll do. I want to be like God. There ain't nothing to being president. Please, Lavania, Sid pleaded. Don't make me do it. Colonel Mudcat would never agree to that. It's evil. Go, she said, throwing a slipper to send him on his way. And Sid went. Colonel Mudcat, Sid called. Whatever can she want now, asked Colonel Mudcat. I'm awful sorry, Colonel, Sid said. But she, she, she wants to be like God. Colonel Mudcat waited a moment before speaking. Sid had never seen an angry catfish, but he recognized the emotion. Return to your wife, Sid, Colonel Mudcat said. You'll find her in your old run-down shack by the river. <laughs> yes, sir, Sid laughed. And thank you ever so much, Colonel. You've made me a happy man. A few nights later, Sid sat at the end of his dock fishing. What's so funny? asked a voice. Why, Colonel Mudcat, Sid said, awful good to see you. I was just thinking how much I surely do love fishing. Tomorrow, I'll show you where to catch the fattest bass in the river, said the Colonel. You know, Colonel, Sid said, I think you and I is going to be good friends. Swim a bit closer and I'll let you try a piece of Lavania's cornbread. <laughs>